We're joined now by Joey Levin, CEO of IEC. Thanks for talking to us this morning. Thanks for having um, me. IEC is an assortment of 150 different companies, but one of them, Vimeo, was at one point going to compete in the streaming wars. And all the new content, all the new streaming services are very much um, a topic of conversation here. Vimeo decided to go in a different direction and focus more on services, but what do all these new entrants in the streaming space mean for you and Vimeo? Uh, if it's a streaming war, we'd like to be an arms dealer. We want to send the, the product services to people who are making video. Video is relevant not just to people you know, building streaming services, which there's now endless amounts of that and endless amounts of capital, but also every small business, every event, uh, every uh, uh, where people interact, they're expecting video now. It used to be text, then it was images, now it's video, and people need the tools to make that, and, and our goal is to provide them. But you pivoted away from being a platform for streaming. Do you regret that now that everyone's jumping into that space? No, I'm thrilled now that everyone's jumping into that space. I think between the time we announced that we were going to get into the streaming wars and the time we backed out, there was another several billion dollars within a few months that entered the category, and we were not competing with, with weapons that size and uh, thought we'd be better off being a, a service provider. Now, many of your companies compete with Facebook and Google. In fact, Ask.com used to be Ask Jeeves has basically been put out of business by Google. With all of this talk of regulation and antitrust hearings next week, do you think these companies to be broken up? I don't know what the right answer is, but I do know that we need an answer. And regulations are very hard to get right. I think. Frequently, regulations in areas like that end up helping the incumbents. Uh, those companies have already built huge data uh, stores, and they, they know what to do with those. It'll just make it harder for the next people to come in uh, to, to gather the data they need to compete. So I don't know how the regulations would work. I'd love to see that happen. I'd love to see regulations allow for more competition and protect competition. Uh, but it's hard to see how that's going to work. I don't think GDPR did that really and I don't know what would uh, and so they may need other solutions. But when you look at the antitrust issue in particular and the size and scale of those companies as you try to compete with them, is it even possible to compete with a, a Google when you look at what happens to some of your companies? Yeah, I, look, I think it's possible. I think they have to play fairly. You know, they have a significant position in search and search starts uh, and they have a significant position in other areas too and that's where a lot of people start their behavior. And uh, if Google starts favoring their own products or continues favoring their own products, that's not going to leave room for others. Uh, and, and I think that's not necessarily great for the country. Uh, now, uh, IAC has spun off 10 different public companies over the years. As you look at your assortment of companies now and you look at the IPO market and the fact that some recent IPOs have fallen flat, what's your outlook for taking your companies public? Uh, we don't think a lot about a particular market when we're taking a particular market state when we're taking a company public we more think about what's right for the company at the time so can the company uh, does the company need access to capital does the company need a currency does the company could the company benefit in some way by being public having a public currency and kind of independent of what market we're in at that moment that's a time we take a company public and just because the the market might be hot or valuations might be high doesn't mean we need to hit that window because we're we take a much longer term perspective on and, it. and what's your outlook on some of these recent IPOs uh, I, I mean they're all different they all have their own story it's a there's great companies going public. I think there's fantastic companies going public and I think it'll be good for for investors to have opportunities to invest in them it's better that they're public in in a lot of cases than being private where a limited number of people can invest in them uh, a number of your companies are in the gig economy space Angie's List Handy Craft Jack Home Advisor these are about allowing people to to sell services in different ways when you look at the fact that there's regulation being introduced that's trying to get the people who are offering those services to be treated like employees, there are major concerns that it could effectively shut down these gig economy platforms like yours. What are you watching there? I think there's different answers for different businesses. So we have businesses that have uh, uh, gig economy workers, 1099 workers. We have businesses that are very big on W-2 workers. The question is, are the employees or the are the people doing the work uh, getting the benefits that they want and getting the benefits that they need? Many of them prefer to be independent contractors. Many of them prefer some of the benefits of independent contractors. And others, like uh, uh, 
Blue Crew, which is all W-2 workers, uh, want benefits and, and, and need the things that come with, with being a W-2 worker. Those are, each business has their own, uh, own needs on that. But one of the other things that we're doing at IAC right now that's really important to us for, for our uh, 8,000 employees is we're now, we just announced a big change to our 401k plan where we are for, to address the, the income inequality gap, to get more people investing in the market, to get more people participating in the economy and capitalism. We are now uh, matching 100% uh, of people's 401k contributions up to 10% of their salary, which is, I think, relatively unheard of mm -hmm. among our competitors and other companies, and I'm hoping other people follow in that.